Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm gonna play some footage of me laying out some keyframes and chat to you while this is happening. This is a character focused shot so I will start with the character for this one. In many of my other videos I've shown you how I first create a background and then sort of slot my characters into it, but uh, this will take the opposite approach. This will eventually be a shot that goes into my current personal project, which is an animated short film. And if you're new here, uh, I got a bunch of videos covering different shots I make uh, for this film. In this one, I will work with what's called pose to pose animation, which means we establish a few main keyframe poses and that then drives the full sequence. These are the most extreme or uh, you could say most significant frames uh, my character or poses my character takes um, they can be later blended together with in between frames to create a smooth animation there are a few ways you can animate either you can do this with a few guiding frames that drives your full sequence or you can animate chronologically starting from frame one and going forward frame by frame for less quick motions and acting of characters like we're doing here, pose-to-pose -pose animation always seems to be the better way, but linear animation where you draw chronologically is great for other things like animating effects like water or smoke or really fast action moves for example. But with pose-to-pose -pose, you have a bit more control and it allows you to eventually see the full sequence in a low frame rate but you know, you can still see it before fully committing to it. I'm using Photoshop to animate here. As you could see in the beginning, I brought up the timeline and created a video timeline. Then I set my frame rate, which is 12 FPS. And that's what I use for all the characters for this film. And then I created a video layer, which I can draw on. To be able to animate in Photoshop, those are the basic steps you go through and it's pretty simple. My character here is somewhat detailed, so each frame takes some time to draw. I thought it could be interesting to see some bits in real time here, to get an understanding of the time I spend on each of these keyframes. Sometimes when we only see the time lapses of the process, it might be hard to actually get the hang of what actually goes into it. I think some slower paced videos like this might be cool, but of course, if you want to be able to see the entire animation come together, I would have to speed things up as these sometimes take hours or, you know, even days to finish. For this episode, we will only get the keyframes done and not the in-betweens. So it will be quite a jagged animation, but it will establish all the main poses. This shot will contain dialogue, so I'm gonna have to animate the mouth and expression of him. I will first get the general moves down though, and then focus on getting the keyframes timed correctly to the audio. I have not yet recorded the audio, but I know what he will say, so I will record that once these first frames are done. First we will get the general moves in. To give you a bit of context here, this guy is one of two main characters for my film. Uh, he's a rock climber and together with his mates they have hiked up a mountain to this big boulder that they are projecting to climb. And in this shot specifically he's responding to what the other guy is saying. So we cut from the other guy to this and uh, they're talking about the different moves that will be required for this climb and he's sort of mimicking them standing on the ground. Uh, you know, trying to visualize them. You see this a lot in rock climbing, so if you're into that you might know what I'm talking about. 
He's uh, reading the boulder. That's what it's called. He's basically gonna flap his arms around, trying to remember the sequence of moves that are ahead of him. Just so you're on board with what I'm sort of aiming for here. So I just flip the canvas and why I do that is to just get a fresh perspective and see, you know, if there's any problems I didn't notice before. When you look at a picture for too long, it's not easy to see the mistakes and, you know, whether it's off proportions or weighted in the wrong place or so on. So flipping it gives you this instant refresh that sort of helps you to spot these things. So this is the first keyframe and we can now go forward to the next. Uh, I turn on the onion skin feature so I can see what's going on between the frames. I set these somewhat low, uh, I don't want to see it too clearly. I want to be able to tell what's going on in the previous frame, but I don't want it to distract me. For the second frame I want him to lean over slightly to his right. So I'm using the keyframe before as a guide to get the scale and everything correct, and then I offset something slightly here. It's good to move back and forth between the frames, just to check that it transitions nicely from one to the next. It's like the old masters used to do with the paper, where they, you know, flip the last couple of sheets between their fingers to get like a slight reference of how the movement works. I'm working in 4K resolution in case that's interesting to know. I always tend to work in the resolution of what the film actually will be like in the end. Something I quite enjoy is drawing hands. It's always challenging, but it's also a fun practice. And it's satisfying when they turn out the way I want them to. It's a lot about capturing the right silhouette rather than getting all the fingers in the correct space. Well, the fingers needs to sit in the correct place, but the overall shape of the hand is more important than getting all the details in. By the way, thanks to everyone who's joined me here over the last year. It's really been cool to see how the channel has grown, you know, pretty quickly. And um, yeah, it's really nice to read all your nice comments as well. So it definitely motivates me to create more. So I'm happy about how he brings his right hand over here first uh, as he imagines you know, grabbing onto a hold and then now I'm gonna make him sort of stretch out completely to the next hold after that. This will be the hardest move on the boulder so he's basically saying that to his partner while simulating it. He's gonna say something like yeah but then I think you really have to go dynamically to the one after. Uh, and when he stretches out his arm he basically shows the dynamic move he's talking about. Probably none of this makes sense uh, to you at the moment, uh, but when slotted into an edit, it will hopefully make sense. Right now, I understand if it's a bit confusing, but I'm sure we will get there. This is the first stage, so these frames will be cleaned up at a later stage. 
but I try to spend enough time on each of the main keyframes so that I am happy with what my character looks like in each of them. Things like his hands I can refine in the next step, but I want there to be enough information um, so that I know what's going on and so it doesn't look messy. I'm gonna add a frame between these two keyframes as I want a frame that anticipates the upcoming big movement of his arm. I need a guy to sort of lean over to his right and then fire out his arm so that, um, you know, so that that has some impact. If you wanna add a frame between two frames that you've already drawn on a video layer, you can go up here and under the layer menu, insert a blank keyframe. I have even set this uh, as an action in Photoshop to one of the function keys on my keyboard. That makes that process a bit quicker. You know, taking your phone and uh, filming yourself, acting these things out can be really useful. Uh, it doesn't have to look pretty, just making sure the sequence works and that the moves look the way you want them to. So here are a few frames that covers the main poses. It goes from quite passive, bringing over his arm to the right, stretching out for the big move, holding that for a second, and then drops his hand down while he keeps talking. I will then cut to a close up of his face as he finishes the sentence. The next step for me will be to add, um, you know, frames between all these to smooth out the animation but I will record the audio first so I can time these to the sentence and he will say. Maybe that could be something I make a video about, we'll see. Uh, let me know if you like this slower pace workflow. Obviously it means we don't get to see the full process, but maybe sometimes a snippet of the workflow is interesting too. All right, I'm gonna leave it here, but feel free to subscribe to the channel and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Have a good day and I'll see you soon.